welcome back for another video. So we looked at the FPL template a few weeks ago when FPL first launched. So how's the template evolved over pre-season? In this we're going to look at the template team which is built from the highest owned players in the game. Interestingly the team has actually changed a lot including the formation change. We'll also look at some template breakers to consider as we move through. I'll be posting FPL content in the lead up to game week 1 and every game week throughout the season so make sure you subscribe by clicking the button below. So let's get into the team, and Ananas the new template keeper, it was Ramsdale before. He's actually a fraction of a percent behind Ramsdale but it's a matter of time till overtaken so we've chucked him in. We did a deep dive with some analysis of Anana in my FPL team video early this week which will be on screen at the end if you missed it. Only one player has survived at the back, Shaw, Trent and Trippier have all left the template team. It's a back through of Gabriel, Estepinian and Stones. What I really like about this team is there's one asset from the top four of the clean sheet odds in Gaming 1. Arsenal and Man United both given a 45% chance, Man City 47% chance and Brighton 51.5%. Forest have struggled for goals in pre-season, they're goalless in their last two friendlies which is concerning if you're a Forest fan but good reading if you own an Arsenal defensive asset. Brighton top the clean sheet odds and Esther Pinion the most owned defender in the game, just over half of the player base owning him. One goal and seven assists last season. Perhaps something that's been a little overlooked is the fact that both Estepinian and Mitoma are going to be attacking down Kabore's side, who's Luton's new right wing back signing. Still a young player and he's been thrown in the deep end of such a tough job in Gimmick 1. Stones joins the template of just over a quarter of all managers owning him, so what's the appeal of Stones? Man City's second top of the Gimmick 1 clean sheet odds, first of all, and from around Gimmick 27 last season, Stones was given a new role. In possession, he plays in midfield alongside Rodri. They'll look something like this when they're in possession. Stones further advance than the rest of the defence, and he'll even have an occasional pop at goal. He scored against Yokohama from the edge of the box earlier in pre-season. That said, to play devil's advocate here, Stones' longest streak of starts over the last five years is seven games, so perhaps a ticking time bomb, potentially high upside though. The midfield is Saka, Matoma, Bruno and Rashford. If you caught the pre-season form players video, you'll recall Saka's having a good pre-season, two goals and two assists. Forrest could line up with Aino in left wing back with Lodi not in the picture after his loan ended. So again this could be a weakness that Saka could exploit down that side, perhaps Erdegaard as well. Matoma vs Luton's new signing Kabore, another potential vulnerability. A couple of assists in pre-season for him and it's hard to overlook such a great opening game. Matoma is at 37.5% ownership and Bumo 27.7% ownership, Eze 12.8%. So if you're looking for template breakers those are some great alternatives to Matoma. Ibumo will be on penalties and some corners as well. Eze should also be on penalties and he is Palace's talisman now after Zaha's departed. If you're looking for a super differential then also 6.5 mil is Diaby from Aston Villa with 5.2% ownership, two goals in pre-season since signing. Bruno and Rashford are in the template team together for the Wolves at home game in game week 1. They've had a tough pre-season but don't be put off by their lack of returns. The three games that they've played were Arsenal, Real Madrid and Dortmund. On paper Bruno should have a better season and improve on his 176 points with a proper striker to be feeding chances to in Holland. And pre-season watch suggests that he'll have a more advanced role than Mount which may free him up further. At times we saw Bruno restricted to a deep role last season. Rashford theoretically should also benefit as he'll be playing his favoured left wing position rather than throwing up top. Son is the obvious template breaker for the same price though he's not returned in pre-season. He did point out in a recent interview that he'd spent all of last season playing in pain which has since been fixed I believe via surgery. Perhaps a blip season and he'll be back to his best. So who are the front three in the template? It's Jesus and Kunku and Haaland. No Liverpool player is a clear weakness in the template here. The early template a few weeks back had Trent, Salah's not been in it at any point. They face some easy opponents in pre-season but Salah's been returning every 22 and a half minutes, Bayern game excluded from the current data here. This was Liverpool's lineup to face Bayern Munich, on paper it looks like the full strength team. No Darwin interestingly who has been smashing it in pre-season as well, perhaps due to his lack of defensive work rate compared to Gakpo and Jota. I'd still expect him to start versus Bournemouth in game week 2 which is the fixture everyone wants him for, he's another template breaker. So let's talk Nkunku first, having a really good pre-season with 3 goals, a goal every 81 minutes. Really exciting signing for Chelsea, as is Jackson by the way, but it's Nkunku who's the favoured one in the template. I think there could be games here and there where Jackson doesn't start while Nkunku should be nailed so I'm in agreement here despite Jackson actually having a better pre-season so far. Nkunku also potentially on pens for Chelsea. 
Going for Nkunku over Jesus in a front two works great as well in my opinion. You're going to inevitably want to sell Jesus for Nkunku around game week 3 when Chelsea's fixtures turn incredible starting with Luton at home. So instead you could run with double Arsenal mids and that lets you stay double up an Arsenal attack but also save the probable booked in transfer. Nonetheless it's a front three here with both of them. There is a chance that Trossard could eat away at Jesus' minutes, more than Martinelli actually, but Trossard's most likely position is going to be left centre mid next to Odegaard. Last season, Jesus had the best minutes per expected goal involvement of the four key Arsenal attackers, though with just 2,055 minutes, while the rest played somewhat more. However, Jesus has finished with a negative XG delta the last couple of seasons, which basically means he's underperformed his XG, or in other words, a poor finisher. Meanwhile, Martinelli's a great finisher, so that's another strong opportunity to break away from the template and something I'm looking at with the Martinelli and Nkunku pairing. So let's get onto the bench, and something we've not even mentioned until this point is that the team has 0.5 mil in the bank as well. The bench is Ariola, Botman, Bell and Anderson. A word of warning on Ariola: if it's looking like he's not West Ham's first choice, then avoid him completely. As such high ownership, he'll inevitably drop to 3.9 mil if he doesn't start the season. Many will be wasting transfers on that goalkeeper slot. If he's not the number one, there's no reason not to get some other formal keeper. Perhaps Matt Turner, if he does get a move from Arsenal to Nottingham Forest. Arsenal have reportedly agreed terms with Raya, so it's now a case of negotiating the price with Brentford. Could be a chain effect in the works here, leading to a hidden formal gem. Newcastle's opening fixtures are horrible, but Botman is still okay as a long-term pick. With this start at 11, there's no need to start him. Alternatively, you could put the 0.5 mil to use for an upgrade, or you could consider another 4.5 mil, such as Colwell or Henry. So which 4 mil defender is the best? It's bad in the template team. Bayer could be the one though from Burnley. I'm expecting Burnley to have a way better season than Luton. Anderson's actually a fraction of a percent behind Baptiste in midfield, but we've thrown him in as he will overtake soon. Manager's obviously aware of what a crazy pre-season he's having, the only player in the league with 7 returns. That said, Newcastle do have real depth in midfield and he's not expected to be a regular starter, but for 4.5 mil, why not? He'll get more minutes than Baptiste, but probably less than Nakamba from Luton, however Nakamba unlikely to get any returns. A few other template breakers to mention. Chilwell, under 10% owned, one goal, one assist in pre-season and he's been taking corners. Chelsea with the best run of fixtures in the league. Bowen has three goals, three assists in pre-season and faces Bournemouth in game week one, 5.5% owned and seven mil. Watkins finishes the season with more points than Jezus in my opinion. Just 14% owned, likely on penalties for Aston Villa and he's 8 mil. Martinelli, Arsenal's top goalscorer last season with 15 in the league, just 12.5% owned. And Visser, who's playing as Brentford's centre forward in pre-season in Tony's absence, he's passed the eye test when I've watched him. He can be a little wasteful but he's a really lively player and he's only 6 mil, 3.9% owned. There's some good FPL content coming over the next few days, so hit subscribe so you don't miss out. Let me know what you think of the template below and see you soon for the next one.